Is your Clip Studio space funky? Does it need work? Is it overwhelming? Does it make you not even want to open the program? Well, I've got some help for you today. It turns out it's all customizable. Whether you're a seasoned Photoshop veteran or you're brand new to digital art, I just wanted to make a quick tutorial going over my workspace, why I think it's pretty cool, and the reasons for why I have things set up the way I do. Let's not waste any more time and just jump into it. So whether I'm painting or doing web comics, everything I do is with this workspace. On the left, I have a navigator menu, which lets me see uh, the entire canvas. This is actually super useful for when I'm drawing really small details and I want to see how it looks in the, in the whole picture without having to zoom in and out again and again. Here, I just have my sub tools for each tool, pencils, brushes, etc. Super important, every single tool has sub tools and these are ways of categorizing your brushes. Keep in mind I've imported a bunch of brushes already from Photoshop and other artists, so mine might look a little bit different than yours and that's okay. Important to remember, this whole window will change depending on what tool you've selected, such as the pen, the pencil, the brush, etc. This will change all the sub-tools, so you'll see all the different categories underneath. You might find a new tool in this menu that you didn't even know you had, but uh, anyway. This next part I'd only really recommend for people who are coming from Photoshop and have some experience working with your brushes. And this is something I can go into more in a later video, but it's the tool property menu. This controls everything from the textures, the sizes, the amount of paint, the amount of color mixing. Every tool has a property for every feature, and it's something I tweak a lot. Click the wrench and you'll get even more settings to look at. Something neat is you can put any setting you want onto the little property bar by clicking these eyeballs and you can see it'll appear in our property window. This is super good so you don't have to go back and forth and find it again if it's something you want to tweak often. I love it. I use it all the time. Again, if you're new, don't worry about any of this. On the top right of my screen, I have what is called a color set. If you're used to Photoshop, these are basically swatches. These are a set of colors that I use for my webcomic. These are some of the most common colors that I use almost every single time. This is a really good way of saving colors that you like, especially if they're ones that you use often. Basically every program from Procreate to Photoshop to whatever has this kind of thing, and I tend to like it a lot. Below that, I keep the color wheel. It is a circle in a box, pretty straightforward. You pick the hue and then the inside controls the light and value and saturation. Very straightforward. Below that, you have your layers. All of your layer controls are going to be right there in that box. And that's basically it. This is everything I use for illustration, digital painting. I'm sure I could even consolidate things to be a little bit smaller if I needed more room, but this also allows me to have some reference up on the top left. Finally, all your tools are going to be on this left side. I would recommend learning the key bindings so you're not having to mouse back and forth and clicking them. It's just so much faster and it'll definitely improve your workflow. But that is a whole other topic. So let's pretend we're starting from scratch. We're opening Clip Studio for the very first time, and it should look something like this. As you can see, your color wheel is on the bottom, your navigator is on the top right. The layers are going to be the only thing that stays as they are. So first of all, we're going to pull out the navigator. You can pull out a tab just by clicking on the tab that it's on and pull it out like a web browser or anything like that. To move a panel around, simply grab the very top of the panel and you can move it around whenever you want by clicking. Then you might notice there's these little three bars. This is just the settings for every single tab, and then you've got minimize and close, so we're gonna go ahead and close both of these. If you ever lose something, if you ever can't find it again, simply go to the window, and then you can find every single window by name. So I closed the color wheel, which is right here, and we're gonna go ahead and put that back, and the navigator. It is super helpful to learn the names. As you can see, it's right here at the top. In case you ever need to find them again, I recommend it. Really, my whole workspace is only made of five parts, and that is the color wheel, the layers, the navigator, and then your tool selection, and then the tool properties. So it lets you pick your tools, and then it lets you edit what the tools do. Very simple, very straightforward. You'll find your sub tools in the top left. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and yank that out right here. The next step is dragging your color wheel to the top right. Simply put it in one of those tabs and make some space for it so it looks nice and comfy. You can see by default we have layer properties just stuck in there. I tend to almost never use this. I prefer blending modes and things like that. Um, then to get rid of these other ones, you can either right click and delete them or drag them off and hit the X. Get those panels out of there. Ugh, I'm working on it. Sorry about that. Anyway, you can see we have tons of space now. Uh, if we want, we could even put another menu here, but for me, uh, I'm pretty cool with just these. By default, we also have these tabs, which include the history and some other stuff. I tend never to even look at this. Personally, it doesn't really come into my workflow almost ever. So here you have your brush sizes. Um, I tend to leave this alone. 
but if you are pressed for uh, screen space, you know, the real estate on your screen, um, just close it. You can close the tab right here and you have all of your, your little tabs here that um, control the different things like the sliders, the swatches, so forth. Swatches for some things tend to be pretty nice. I keep mine actually at the top right, so I can just drag it. Oops, I made a little mistake there. I just drag it to the very top, see where I make this a line, I want that. And now it takes up its own space. And now to make these smaller, I just move my mouse right onto this little bar until it becomes a little scrolling arrow. And I move that up until it's a good size. And that looks, it looks pretty good to me. So <laughs> we're basically done. Um, to make this even smaller, I just hit these double arrows and that hides it. And just like that, I have my workspace all set up. This is how I draw almost all the time. I work on webcomics, I paint, um, and this does pretty much everything I want. If I want more controls, um, I can go to the subtool details and find everything I want here. And so that's basically how to set up your workspace to look like Photoshop or however you want. Um, like everything else, every little control can look really overwhelming, but if you just play with it a little bit and Kind of experiment i find it's really easy to pick up and learn sort of what every single control does and if you ever mess up don't worry you can always reset to default and if you are satisfied with your workspace you can always go to the workspace and register it this saves it so for example i can go back to my old workspaces and it'll basically remember everything i believe it even remembers shortcuts and other things like that so, um, yeah, if this helped you out, make sure to leave a like and tell me your favorite color. Why not? Do it. Um, yeah, have fun. Go do art. Art is fun. Digital art is fun. And thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs>